One of the newest e-readers, it's got a color screen, it's called the Kobo Libra Color. And I'm gonna take you in depth and walk you through all the features, all the options, and all the menus. <laughs> Check it before you wreck it. What's up, my fellow geeks? I'm Kirk, and I listen to you guys. My previous video of an unboxing of this Libra Color, you guys liked it. I linked it down in the description if you haven't seen it yet. And because you guys liked it so much, I wanted to go more in depth. I'm gonna take you through all the menus, all the options. I'm gonna download a book from my local library and show you how that works. Check this thing out. This is the stylus, the pen that you can buy separately. I'll show you exactly how this works, what you can do with this with the Kobo Libra Color. Colors. This is gonna be a long one. It's very in-depth. I've got chapters set up if you want to skip ahead Hopefully this helps you if you're shopping or you're interested in the Kobo Libra color. All right, here we go Here is the Kobo Libra color with the lock screen on there in color, which is cool Let me show you where the power button is on the back in the corner And that's the button you're gonna to hit to wake it up out of sleep mode and voila This is the home screen on the bottom. You've got a bunch of options here home my books uh, notebooks discover and more and I'll go through these real quickly right now my book shows you where all your books are located um, if you go into notebooks this is for creating notebooks works great with that pen stylus thingy that you can buy separately I'll show you that in detail in a little bit the discover tab is for finding new books to buy audiobooks to buy or renting borrowing from your local library in the more you've got a wish list you've got Dropbox Google Drive articles activity uh, beta features and settings I'll show you more of that in a little bit but I want to jump back into a book to get right to kind of the most important features that most people are wondering about this is diary of a wimpy kid the standard gesture is how you change pages you swipe from right to left or you can just tap at the right side of the screen as well and that switches pages there's also a couple of buttons here if you use the the top button that goes back a page if you use the bottom button it goes forward a page pretty self-explanatory you can also switch those functionalities in the settings I'll show you that in just a bit okay so let's get to the menu on the screen you get to that by tapping into the middle of any page on a book and it'll bring up your menu options so here you go you've got a couple of options in the upper right hand corner the first one lets you change the size of the page for this book it might not make sense but if you want to change the size of your font for example that's where you would change it you've got some options to fit it to the width of the page fit it to the height of the page and then you can actually rotate the page itself you're not rotating the menus you're not rotating the the device interface just the actual page of the book now if you want to rotate that well, let me go real quickly to this pen tool this is the next one here doesn't do much when you're just using your finger it's for the stylus again I'll show you how that works in just a bit but if you want to rotate the actual interface of the book maybe you like reading it sideways instead you can switch over to a landscape mode so there's your landscape mode it's locked in the whole interface is now in landscape mode not just the page I'm gonna switch it back to portrait mode but in fact portrait mode I don't want that locked I actually want it in auto mode so if I flip it upside down it'll automatically adjust here's your brightness settings and if you've used a Kobo device before these are pretty standard you've got a over Overall brightness adjustment you've got your natural light adjustment which you can turn to auto or you can adjust manually you've got a bedtime setting right there on the bottom as well so these all are things that you can mess with you get more of a yellow light more of a blue light what's better for you know nighttime reading or daytime reading you can play with that on your device and then in the settings we've got a bunch of stuff here so let's kind of go through some of these and you've got uh, header settings. You can change what shows in the header. You've got a footer setting. You can change that as well. This is all personal preference. How do you want the percentage left of that book to show up? You've got the show book progress bar. You can change the buttons. You can flip or you can flop exactly how those buttons work, the top button and the bottom button. On the second page, you've got uh, the option to refresh the screen every chapter, every page. You know, again, these are your personal preferences. Reading orientation, show Adobe EPUB page numbers or you can switch to a dark mode and you can reduce a rainbow effect I don't know exactly what this is but I'm sure if you've had an issue with that you know what it is um, this is the last page here where you can change kind of where those soft buttons oops let me slide okay I'll turn that back off let me slide back here so you can adjust exactly where those invisible buttons are you can also pinch to adjust the font size you can swipe the left edge to adjust the brightness I don't know if that works when I'm in the menus uh, let me let me try that because that's swiping up and down on the left hand side of the screen easily yeah it doesn't work here it's actually switching back to the other page um, but let me jump out of the menu and I'll show you how that works in just a second and there you go so you swipe up or down on the left hand side of the screen and it adjusts the brightness an easy way for a, a setting that people are gonna want to jump to very very quickly makes sense to have that I like that 
All right, now let me get up to the three dot menu in the corner. You've got return. I can return my book to the library, write a review, view details, dictionary, related books. And if I hit view details, for example, this goes right to the details page where I can read more about the book. I can find reviews. I can find other stuff about the book. And then let me get back to that menu again. I'll show you what else is in there. You've got uh, dictionary. So this is a dictionary. You can search the dictionary if you want to look up a word. Uh, you can also highlight words in the book and look those up. But you've also got related books. So this is going to show me other Wimpy Kid books, for example, which is cool if you're looking for the next book in the series or something that might be similar to what you're reading right now. And then you've got hints and tips. This just takes you to some of those hints and tips that pop up on their own when you first start the Kobo. And you can get back to those quickly by using that menu option. These are helpful if you've never used a Kobo device before. On the bottom here, bottom left, we also have some menu options as well, and that'll just jump you to the different chapters, or you can tab over to check out your annotations, which in this case, we haven't created any. I'm gonna jump back to the home page and I wanna show you what it's like to borrow a book from your local library. In this case, I have it set up with OverDrive to my local library. So many libraries are connected to this. So for example, here is my OverDrive page. Let me jump into uh, Ready Player One, for example. I'll tap on the three dots and it says borrow with OverDrive and I tap that. It connects to OverDrive through my Wi-Fi and that's it. That's it. I just borrowed this digital book from my library. It's downloading and it's done. It's that easy. I tap it and the book is open. Amazing how easy it is to borrow these books if they're available, which they're not always available. If they're not, you can place a hold and wait for it. Use the buttons and I'm going through the pages quickly and there are the table of contents right here. I can start reading it right now. Let me show you this because I mentioned this earlier. If I hold my finger down on a word, I can highlight the word, I can add a note, I can even search it. If I do that, what do I get? Search in books, search in Wikipedia, or search in Google. If I, if I hit Wikipedia, it takes me to a very ugly version of Wikipedia. I mean, at least it's loading it up, but it's very, very ugly. Uh, let me highlight a whole section here. So if I highlight this whole section with my finger, then I can use a color to highlight it, but I can also add a note. So I'll change it over to a pink color, which looks kind of cool. Let me try adding a note as well. So I will see if I can select some more text, add the note, and here I can type in a note. I can just type in this is important or whatever I want. This is a test. And this is a way to save a note while you're reading a book. Great for students, great for people who like to annotate their book while they're reading it. So all of this is kind of fun to play with. You can highlight words, you can change them to different colors. I accidentally swipe back to the previous page. I can select passages. I can change that color to green. That didn't work. What am I doing wrong here? It's a little finicky, to be quite honest with you, just because you're using a touch interface. There you go, it worked that time. You're using a touch interface on a slow refresh screen. But you'll notice when I go to the next page and come back, the notes are still there, the highlights are still there, they save with the book, which is kind of cool, and across devices, which is cool as well. If you've got a different Kobo, these will show up on that Kobo as well. Here's a Google search of a word, and it looks a little bit better than the Wikipedia search, um, but it's still a pretty basic web browser. Let me highlight this word. I will highlight that green. Again, this is a cool feature, great way if you like to add highlights and notes as you read a book. Okay, so look at the options here. You have an authors tab, a series tab, and then a collections tab as well. So just different ways of sorting the books that you have saved on this specific device. Let me go over to discover. You've got eBooks, audiobooks, Kobo Plus, and OverDrive. In eBooks, they're essentially, it's a big collection of all kinds of stuff. Books you can buy through Kobo, or also, if they're available, borrow through your library. So I'll go to this book, and I don't see a borrow option. I can preview it, I can buy it. Let me go to a different book and see. So if it's available on your library, it should show the option to borrow it from your library or place a hold. So in this case, again, this one's not available for my local library. Let me go to Dork Diaries, or how about Judy Moody, and let me tap on that one, place a hold. There you go, place a hold with OverDrive. That means I can place a hold, it's not available now. I can place a hold with OverDrive through my library and when it's available, it'll download the book for me. Very cool to have this integrated into one. You have an audiobook section because this does support audiobooks. They're a little bit more expensive than normal books, but it'll download the file to your device. You can use Bluetooth headphones to listen to that audiobook. Kobo Plus is a service where you pay a monthly fee, $8 a month, and you get all you can eat of certain books and such. And then OverDrive takes you specifically to those items that are available from your local library. You do have to connect this with your library card, but once you do, this is the interface you get. And I could borrow this book, for example, right now by tapping borrow with OverDrive.
Let me go to more and show you what's here. I've got a wish list. I can save books to my wish list. That's self-explanatory. Uh, the next option on the list is my Dropbox. I can connect this to Dropbox and put files, PDF files, book files in my Dropbox and open them up right here. Very cool. I can connect my Google Drive and do the same thing or export stuff. I'll show you that in a second. Export stuff to your Google Drive. My Articles works with an app called the Pocket App where you can save articles and read them on your e-reader. Very cool if you like to read news on your e-reader. The activity page is cool, shows you kind of where you are in certain books. I've got 14 average pages per minute, about 10 hours to go on Ready Player One, about 14 minutes to go on this chapter because I haven't read it, obviously. Uh, beta features, you've got a web browser, you've got large print mode, which is for people who just want to make everything a little bit bigger. Very cool. And then uh, My Words, which expands your vocabulary by saving words that you've looked up in the dictionary. Uh, let me go back to web browser real quick. I want to show you this. So this is literally a web browser on the Kobo. And we've seen this on Amazon Kindle devices before. It goes right to Google. But let me try YouTube, for example, since you guys are watching this on YouTube right now. And let me see if that page even loads. No, it doesn't. Your device is no longer supported is what it says. Um, let me try to hit the home button. Yeah, it's just not going to work. So let me try a different website. How about Yahoo? See if Yahoo loads up on here and what it looks like. Okay, so Yahoo is loading up. But to be totally honest, it looks ugly. I mean, this is not a web browser for a daily driver usage. This is in case of emergency. If you got to bring up a website, it's here as a beta feature. Again, that's probably why they hide it in the beta menu because it looks atrocious, but it works pretty good for looking up Google searches of words while you're reading a book, which is nice. I'll jump back to the more menu and go to the settings option now. And there's a lot in here, so I'll go quickly, but uh, I will go one by one down this list so you can see what those settings exactly are. And I'll start with accounts, which is pretty basic. You set up your Kobo account in here. Any other account settings are going to be in here. You can sign out as well. Overdrive, this is how you set it up with your local library by inputting your library card. Date and time, self-explanatory. Don't have to go through that. Language and dictionaries is for selecting your language and which dictionaries are downloaded on this device. And then you've got Wi-Fi connection. You connect it to your Wi-Fi. That's about it. Bluetooth is the same for connecting to Bluetooth headphones for those audiobooks. And then going back, we have a syncing and updates. How often do you want it to sync? When should it sync, et cetera, et cetera. Energy saving and privacy. This is all about when your device goes to sleep, how it goes to sleep, what happens when it goes to sleep, et cetera, et cetera. Probably important options. I'm sure the default will work for most. Reading settings is the same page we saw earlier directly through uh, reading a book. Uh, manage downloads is for how you want your downloads to be saved. If you want to remove them, you can do that all here. The storage on the device itself. Itself. And then you've got device information, which gives you your serial number, your MAC address, stuff like that, device information. Finally, about Kobo Libra Color essentially gives you some legal stuff. And those are the settings options from the more options on the home page. Let's take a closer look at the pen, the stylus. Again, this thing is purchased separately, but let me show you exactly how this works. So you go into any book, you can pick a color, you can pick a pen size, and you can write directly on the pages. So I can underline words, I can circle words, I can add notes on top of the pages, uh, kind of like writing with a pencil in your book. Uh, I accidentally highlighted some stuff there, but you can hold the button down on the pen and highlight stuff like this, and then it'll change it to a highlighter color as if you're using a highlighter. I actually think that is one of the most useful things. If you're reading a book and you want to highlight stuff as you go, you can add a note as well. This is silly though. When you add a note, you can't write in there. You can only type in there. It'd be nice if you could write in there as well. Of course, you can use the pen to press the keyboard, but I can't actually write in the note box. I don't understand that. That's kind of frustrating. Over to a fresh page, I can circle words. I could add a little annotation to this uh, specific word, why, for example. And the cool thing is all of this is going to be saved. You're going to come back to the book and it's all going to be there on the pages as if you wrote it there directly. In fact, I can go to annotations. Look at this. This shows me all the annotations that I've made on this book. In fact, it shows a little clip of it, which is really cool. And then if I like that, okay, where is this? I can tap it and it'll take me right to where that annotation or that highlight is right back to that page. That's cool, especially if you highlight certain passages and you want to quickly get back to those passages. I think that's where this option really shines. 
And again, it works for highlights as well as handwritten notes on the pages. There's my highlight, I can jump back into it, and it takes me directly back to that page. If I go back home, I wanna show you my notebooks. This is a cool feature if you have this stylus. Of course, it works without the stylus, but it's a great option with the stylus. You've got a basic notebook and an advanced notebook, and I'll show you each of them. Let me start with the basic notebook, and I'll hit save to create a notebook, and this essentially just lets you write uh, and highlight and erase on a blank page. That's sort of all you have here. So if you wanna draw, if you wanna write sloppy notes, et cetera, et cetera, this is where you do it. There's no lines on the page. It's literally just a blank page. I can push the button and highlight this, for example. And I love the fact that there's a simulated eraser on the back and it will erase what you just wrote as if it's a real eraser. But watch this, so I'll write again a little cursive here, and again, I can just sort of play around with it. I could, uh, I'm looking for the button here. If I use the button, it highlights uh, again, and I can use the eraser to erase, so I've got an S and a T remaining. I can circle the whole thing, and that's that. That's the basic notebook. You have multiple pages as well if you'd like, but that's the basic notebook for just kind of free writing on this device. If I go back, let me create a new notebook and I'll select advanced this time. And the, the first thing you'll notice when you do an advanced notebook, let me give it a name. I'll just call it ADV for advanced. When you hit save, the first thing you'll notice is this one has lines because this is about writing to convert to text. You can do other stuff as well, but basically that's what this is designed designed for. And there's more kind of features here, more options that you can do. You see that in this uh, little tip page here, it shows you some of those. There's more to do here. And let me show you exactly how that works. So if I jump in here, I've got a lined page and I can write a couple of words. I'll just write hello and this. Oh, see, lefty syndrome there. My left hand is squishing the screen and therefore causing problems. And you can see this isn't perfect. This is somewhat sloppy. Uh, my, my H in hello is missing a line. So will this convert this over to text and how well will it do it? I'm gonna test that out in just a second here after I'm done writing. Okay, let me go to the three dot menu, convert all, and it will convert this over to text almost instantaneously. And it did it pretty well. Um, I can highlight it again by holding down the button on the stylus. I can circle it and it'll highlight it as well. I can actually scribble something out and it'll erase it. Isn't that kind of cool? I mean, very natural design here. Double tap to edit. I'm not sure exactly what that does. Again, there's a lot of features, a lot of different ways you can do stuff here. I'm not sure how the double tap to edit works, but if I scribble out this, let me do it better this time. There you go, it actually erased the word this. So you circle to highlight, you scribble to erase stuff. You can of course use the eraser on the back of the stylus as well. And you've got your options here. Let me see, insert free form section, math equation, insert drawing. So I can insert a drawing right into the middle of my page if I wanna do that. Of course, if you're taking notes and you wanna put a quick drawing of something, this is a way to put that into the page. And again, the refresh rate of this screen, it's an e-ink screen. It's, it's better than they used to be, but it's not perfect. Here are your other options. Oh, this is cool, export notebook. So I can take this page, export it to my computer, export it to Dropbox, which I showed you earlier, or Google Drive. I don't think it's set up on this, this device yet. No, it's not. But if you wanted to, you could export that page over to Google Drive so you could share it with your coworkers, share it with your friends or family or what have you. That is the My Notebook feature. Oh, I love how the stylus magnetically attaches to the side of the Kobo as well. If you still have questions after that, well, I don't know what to say, that was a lot, but pop them in the comments. I'd love to answer more questions if you're wondering about very specific things about the Kobo Libra color. And I wanna know if you've purchased this, if you're happy with it, if you like the color screen, if you like the features and the options of the Kobo compared to the Kindles perhaps. And of course, subscribe to the channel. A lot more geeky stuff here on Tech It Before You Wreck It. I'm Kirk.